Palestine to take up the struggle where your fathers and mothers have left off. To use Mona's own words, I quote, we live in a new era where Palestinians can make themselves head despite obstacles, close quote. Mona and her brother Mohammed emergence like that of Ahed, Ahmed uh, Ahed Tamimi symbolizes the rise of a new generation of youth who are fearless and resilient in the face of immense odds. We salute you and assure you that we shall continue to mobilize the youth in particular and all sectors in the international solidarity movement in support of our struggle for a free Palestine. In the 1980s, 1990s, many of you will recall the voices of youth reverberated with slogans, we shall not be moved. As we, re as we rallied the world in support of our struggle and the Free Mandela campaign. Today we say we shall not be moved and we shall continue to mobilize until Palestine is free. Our leadership and youth in the UDF, many of whom are here today, mobilized across all sectors of society. They were fearless in using graffiti, pamphleteering, going door to door, organizing gatherings in mosques, churches, synagogues, temples, schools, and every conceivable site of struggle. Even the funerals of our martyrs became rallying points and sites of resistance. Today, we salute Mona as she and her contemporaries contemporaries have harnessed the power of social media to bring attention to the world of the atrocities being committed in Sheikh Jarrah, in Silwan, as well as in South Hebron Hills. Through your efforts, Mona, you have created awareness that the Zionists continue their program of ethnic cleansing genocide, and crimes against humanity. Today, it is your voice that has brought Palestinian struggle to the fore and ensured that on every continent, our voices are heard and will continue to be heard until Palestine is free. You are our heroine and your voice has sent a strong message to the world that Israel is an apartheid state. It is your voice and the voices of your generation that says fearlessly to the apartheid Israeli regime that we will not be silenced and that we will continue to campaign so that all the world may know that we demand an end to the occupation, an end to illegal settlements on Palestinian lands, and an end to the brutality that is meted out against Palestinians on a daily basis, particularly women and children. Your voice has inspired us to say to the world that Israel is an apartheid state and guilty of crimes against humanity and that the time is not far when the murderers of dear Yasin, Sabra, Shatila, Beit Laham, Sheikh Jarrah, Silwan, South Hebron Hills, all of Gaza and the West Bank will face charges in the International Criminal Court and the International Criminal Court of Justice for the heinous crimes they have committed 
against the Palestinian people. We say to the world that every Palestinian in exile and all refugees in the Palestinian diaspora have a right to return to the land of their birth and the homes of their ancestors. Your voice echoes in the corridors of power, saying unequivocally that the apartheid Israeli regime, that your days are numbered. We want to convey our message to young people in Palestine, youth movement, and all youth formation in occupied Palestine, that we shall continue to support you and that your struggle is not in vain. We stand today by the commitment made by our global icon, His Excellency President Nelson Kholitlatha Mandel, when he said that, I quote, we know all too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinian people, close quote. Let us support the Palestinian struggle by one, raising our voices on all continents, declaring for all the world to hear that Israel is indeed an apartheid state. Let us support the good work done by our young sister, Mona, and really all young people to harness the power of social media to raise awareness on the Palestinian struggle and the crimes committed against humanity and against the Palestinian people. At this juncture, we have called on all young women in particular, but youth right across South Africa to boycott Miss Universe that will be held in apartheid Israel. <laughs> Miss South Africa has responded to us, Judge Desai, saying to us that they will not be involved in political words. The killing of innocent and women in particular is not political words. And today I stand before you, my elders, and young people in particular. We are calling for a national protest towards Miss South Africa. And if Lalela Mswana, and if our Miss South Africa, Lalela Mswana, as she said in the contestants, she wants to empower women. She wants to stand for women's rights. Let her empower Palestinian women. Let her fight for the Palestinian women's rights. We therefore call on all political formations and all uh, our international solidarity movements to rally right across our land in support of a boycott of this world. Well, in particular, sorry, in uh, support in, in to stand against uh, Miss Universe. Pardon me for that. Let's join our brave workers formation and dock workers in Durban and all over the world in refusing to offload or all the goods from apartheid Israel and especially from the illegal settlements. Let us also continue to build strong bridges between our youth formations and mobilize them to build a strong bond and an international solidarity in support of the Palestinian cause. Last but not least, respected elders, let us work together to, uh, to intensify the boycott, divestment, and sanctions campaign globally so that we may hit apartheid Israel where it matters most. Finally, let us call on our ANC-led government not to leave it to the Times Magazine to honor our heroes. Let us take the lead and bestow the highest order of merit on Mona El-Kud 
and her fearless generation for advancing our struggle. Our struggle, the struggle for a free Palestine. Allow me, Program Director, to conclude with the words of the father of our nation and our global icon of peace, just for all, President Mandela, when he said on the 4th of November, no, sorry, on the 4th of December 1997 in Pretoria, on the occasion of the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people, he said, I quote, the temptation in our situation is to speak in muffled tones about an issue such as the right of the people of Palestine to a state of their own. We can easily be enticed to read reconciliation and fairness as meaning parity between justice and injustice. Having achieved our own freedom, we can fall into the trap of washing our hands of difficulties that others face. Yet, we would be less than human if we did so. It behoves all South Africans, themselves and as well beneficiaries of generous international support to stand up and be counted amongst those contributing actively to the cause of freedom and justice, close quote. Long live Muna El Quds. Long, Long live. Long live the struggle of the Palestinian people. Long live. Amanda. Away to. Forward with the free Palestine. Forward. Panting apartheid Israel. Panty. Panting apartheid Israel. Panty. Takbir. Takbir. Thank you very much, Chief Mandela Mandela. That was an outstanding address. You said everything that has to be said. Thank you very much. Your call for the boycott of Miss South Africa is endorsed by all of us here. We support your position on that, absolutely. Thank you very much for that. And we'll take it further from here as well. Uh, Sheikh, uh, Gabriel came in late. I suppose it was Ishai time. <laughs> Maghrib, oh, sorry. I had my five prayers wrong. <laughs> So Gabriels is the uh, former president of the MJC and he continues to play a dominant role in Muslim politics in the Cape. But besides that, he's a strong advocate of the rights of the Palestinian people and also he's my good friend and comrade, Sir Gabriels. Uh, shukran, thank you, Judge Siraj. And because of time, I'm going to say Assalamu alaikum to everybody and shukran for being here. And I start immediately with my few words that I've prepared in saying that uh, I was looking for a phrase or a slogan that was used by Sheikh Umar Suleiman from the United States of America uh, just after the uh, Gaza bombings. And I, I couldn't find these words, but yesterday a group of youth came to the airport with 500 packets of dates, three lovely dates, and lo and behold, it was written on the small packet of each and every five packets of the dates, don't stop talking about Palestine. And that is what I was looking for. And these type of phrases is called in Arabic, Jawami ul Kalim. In other words, few words, but volumes of meaning. So I'm saying again to this audience, don't stop talking about Palestine. 
And please don't stop your efforts and your activism for the liberation of Palestine. Don't stop with your moral and your vocal and your financial support for the people of Palestine. As Muna correctly said yesterday, the Palestinian issue is not only about Sheikh Jarrah. It's not only about Masjid Aqsa. We know Masjid Aqsa for the Muslims around the world. It's very close to our hearts. But the Palestinian issue is not only about Masjid Aqsa. It's about each and every inch, that is what Muna said yesterday, of Palestine. It's about every Palestinian. Our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said when he was making tawaf around the sacred house in Makkah. And he explained to them the sacredness of this house. And then he said, but the honor and the dignity of a human being, a human being, is far more greater than the secrecy of the sacredness of the holy house, the Kaaba in Makkah al Mukarramah. <clears throat> so it is, it is to do with every, each, and, each and every Palestinian, each and every Palestinian child. A few weeks ago, I saw a video about an Israeli soldier admitting that at night time, randomly, they would enter and raid the homes of Palestinian people in the middle of the night in West Bank. And I saw the video and my eyes fell on this young six-year-old girl, shoulders standing in a house with machine guns and I saw the fright and the fear and the panic in the eyes of this little girl. This is what the Palestinian issue is all about. <clears throat> Twice in the Gaza, I've been at a gathering for the families of the prisoners, the mothers, the wives, the children. The mother didn't see her son for 20 years, 30 years. She's not even allowed to visit the son. The wife is not allowed to visit her husband. The children are not allowed to visit their fathers. And you see mothers holding the picture of their son with tears in their eyes. Huh? Yeah. In the month of September, I think the 29th or the 30th of September, in the year 2000, Muhammad Durra was murdered and killed by the Israeli army. On a day that was supposed to be one of his most happiest days, because his father saved money and saved money to buy him a bicycle, and they were on their way to buy a base bicycle, and the Israeli army murdered him. So, I, I told Professor Yusuf, I'm only going to speak for three minutes, so I've only got about 20 seconds left. I, I just want to say that Muna didn't come here for sightseeing and just a visit. She came here to get our full support. She came here to hear us. Yeah. She's here to request not to stop talking about Palestine. And in conclusion, I want to say, may Allah protect Muna and all the youth of Palestine. And she was already arrested. And we make dua that Allah must protect her. But we want to say to her here from Cape Town in South Africa, if she's going to be arrested again, we are going to raise our voices here in Cape Town until they will release her. Inshallah. Shukran. Thank you, Sir Gabriels. You know, you touch on a very important point, and that's the arrest of young people. You know, uh, when Ashley Kili was around, we as lawyers made a great noise if people under the age of 18 were arrested, youths. And we succeeded very often on the basis that the arrest arrested person was a youth. But what happens in Israel today is considerably worse. They arrest 10 and 11 year olds arrest and detain them. And that's totally unacceptable to any system of civilized legal order. So that's one of the issues which an international court will consider when you manage to indict the Israeli leadership in the world court. Our next speaker is Abdullah Grifat. He's of Mizan International. Mizan is an organization 
which is based in Israel, and they consist of lawyers who, did, who do very much the sort of same work that we as lawyers did in the 80s and 90s. They're lawyers, they run around when people are arrested, try to get them out on bail, try to defend them, and do their best to mitigate the rigors of the Israeli legal system. But Mizan is also now international. The international organization is the Friends of Mizan, and I chair the Friends of, uh, Friends of Mizan. It's my privilege to call upon Abdullah Grifat to say a few words. Thank you. Assalamu uh, alaikum, everyone. Uh, thank you, Judge, for this, for the introduction. Thank you to Father Wida, Chief Mandla, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim. Uh, thank you very much. And shukran to everyone who's, who has come here today to honor the, our guests and to listen to our struggle and for your constant support. Uh, as Judge Desai say that uh, I've been trying to, you know, uh, work with, the, with these lawyers to, inshallah, support the Palestinian cause. But I've, I've been in particular since I came to this court looking at uh, the picture of Ashley Creel and I'm actually remembering some of the cases that we have been representing. And one particular case came to my mind, which is about a young man who has three daughters, and when his name is Mohammed Jilani, from Jerusalem as well, when he was driving his car with his children. And I just couldn't, you know, take my mind off this particular story where a soldier by the name of Maxim. Uh, who just came to Palestine to occupy Palestine a few years before he actually stepped on the foot on the on, uh, on the neck of uh, of Muhammad Jilani and shot him in the head from point zero, and I just like when I'm looking at that picture in front of me, I I couldn't like take that image from my head, and it's it's such a great you know opportunity for us as Palestinians to come and share our history and to share our struggle with the South African community. As judge say that our Mizan is a legal organization that has been trying to represent Palestinians in Israeli courts. And we have been facing so many challenges because you know in Israel there is no justice. There is no way for us to fight for justice, but we are trying our best. We will continue trying our best no matter what they do and they will never crush our will to fight for justice which is the most important thing is that we have a will that can never be crushed. <laughs> now we have come to South Africa and the first person that I went to was Judge Desai and I told him about the work that we have been doing and he was, uh, he blessed us by saying that, by offering us actually that, can I be part of this organization? And we told him, please, we would like you to be you know, the national chairperson of Friends of Misa in South Africa. It was such a great opportunity for me when, I, when the lawyers told me that we want you to represent us in, in South Africa. We see that there is a deep connection between the Palestinian struggle, the daily struggles that we are going through in Palestine, and the history of the South African people in defending, you know, their rights and in beating and defeating uh, apartheid. We want to learn from the South African struggle, from the transition period, and from the post-democratic you know, era, and because we want to learn from the achievements and from the lessons and the challenges that have been, you know, that you have faced. And I'm sure that one day, we will all sit in Palestine and say that, look, South Africa and Palestine and have been, you know, going through a joint struggle, and then one day we, all of us, hopefully in our lifetime, we celebrate in Palestine the freedom of the Palestinian people. <laughs> I, I don't want to take much time because some of you, um, maybe, uh, I'm, I hope I'm not the only one who's getting hungry. So, <laughs> uh, I, I really hope that soon, soon enough, Muna al-Kurd, her brother, all of us, who are here in this, uh, you know, lovely dinner, will be in Palestine celebrating with those prisoners, with those who have lost their homes and their lands, the refugees who have been, you know, in ref living in refugee camps since 1948. I hope we all can be, can return to Palestine and say, 
that Palestine is finally free, like you have said in South Africa. And I hope that one day we don't have to come to South Africa, you know, asking for help to support the Palestinian cause. We will come to celebrate with South Africans the Palestinian victory. Thank you very much. The lawyer sitting at the back. Why are you sitting at the back? Come sit in front here. Ashraf. Table here. Ashraf is shy. I must say this, that uh, I must introduce him to you people. In the case that uh, the South African Zionist Federation has brought against me, Ashraf is my attorney. <laughs> so... Uh, and unlike all the other lawyers in South Africa, he's acting pro amico for me. Oh. <laughs> so I said, if you can come sit in front. Now, it's, it's this very special and solemn occasion that we have a speaker from the heart of struggle in Palestine. Muna comes from the heart of struggle. She comes from the struggle being waged against the evictions in Sheikh Jarrah, the struggle against Israeli oppression, the struggle for basic dignity in that country. She's striking in that she's young, a new generation of freedom fighters, freedom fighters who we, who we can identify with and support as we remember our own freedom fighters of yesteryear. When I, it's a, a privilege for us to have you in this country to remind us of the fragility of mankind, that people so young as you have to take up resistance in the way that you do, resistance to the extent that you do. And thank you very much for coming to South Africa. Thank you. And before you even speak, I want to say this, that from all of us here in this hall, you have our unconditional support. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Hi, everyone. And thank you for hosting us today. I'm very, I'm very honored to be here with you, Father, all of you. Um, I'm going to speak in Arabic, so it will be like more comfortable to me. And Abdullah will translate. Okay? Yeah? You're fine with it? <laughs> Do I have a choice? <laughs> okay, and you can listen to our beautiful language, Arabic language. في البداية بدي أشكر أشكركم على دعوتنا للحضور. إحنا جد أنا وبتكلم عن نفسي جدا سعيدة في وجودي هون في جنوب أفريقيا للمرة الثانية وسعيدة جدا بكل الحفاوة والترحيب اللي وجدته من أهلي الجنوب أفريقيين هون في جنوب أفريقيا. First of all, I would like to thank you for... Do I have to stand up? <laughs> Sorry. So first of all, I would like to thank you all for, for receiving me here in South Africa and for your support, your constant support. I'm very uh, happy and very honored to be with my own family here in South Africa for the second time uh, in South Africa. أنا من حي الشيخ جراح اللي كل كلكم سمعتوا عنه في الآونة الأخيرة في السوشيال ميديا وفي الإعلام لكني معكم اليوم لأن إلوا لكم صوت كل فلسطيني بعاني يوميا من انتهاكات الاحتلال في كل أماكن تواجده في الشيخ جراح وفي سلوان وفي لفتة وفي جبل صبيح في راس العمود في البلدة القديمة في المسجد الأقصى في كل أماكن تواجد الفلسطيني. I am here. I came from Sheikh Jarrah. You have all heard about Sheikh Jarrah in social media and in media in general. But I don't come here to only represent and speak about Sheikh Jarrah. I'm here to to speak about Palestine as a whole. 
I'm here to speak about Pal, about Sheikh Jarrah, Silwan, Lifta, Jabal Sbeh, Ras Al Amud, the old city of Jerusalem, and the entirety of Jerusalem, the West Bank, the 1948 occupied territories, Gaza and Palestine, as well as the refugees. في وحدات حي الشيخ جراح من المكان اللي أنا جاي منه هناك خمسمائة شخص وأكثر معرضين للتهجير القسري معرضين لأنهم يفقدوا منازلهم ويسكنوا الشوارع لأنه جمعية استيطانية غير قانونية تدعي ملكيتها لأراضينا ومنازلنا لكن مثل ما إحنا في الشيخ جراح بنواجه تخصير تهجير قصري هناك مئات آلاف الفلسطينيين اللي بواجهوا جميع أشكال الانتهاكات من قبل حكومة الاحتلال ومستوطنيه تهجير قصري هدم منازل تطهير عرقي كل جرائم الحرب اللي بتقوم في بها إسرائيل على أراضي فلسطين كالاعتقال أيضا الضرب السحل التنكيل بكل فئات المجتمع الفلسطيني أطفالا كانوا أم شيوخ أم كبار أم نساء. At the moment, are 500 people in Sheikh Jarrah alone who are now living under imminent threat of being forcibly removed from their houses. Just because there is an Israeli settler group who came only a few years ago to exist, claims that it owns the land which we have been living there for decades. But at the same time, we remember that there are other hundreds and thousands of Palestinians who are facing on a daily basis the brutality of the Israeli regime. They are facing house demolitions and ethnic cleansing. They are facing crime or war crimes. There are children and elderly men and women there are youth who have been struggling on a daily basis across Palestine, not only in Sheikh Jarrah. Today we are going to sleep, and good health for all of you, but in the case of our day, there are six Asra Palestinians who are concerned about the food, and without a challenge on their legal authority, without any harm, to make their freedom, وأحد هؤلاء الأسرة وصل يوم المئة على التوالي في إضرابه المفتوح عن الطعام لنيل حريته. So as we are waiting here for the food to come, and I hope you enjoy it, we also remember that there are at the moment, as we speak, six prisoners who are going through a hunger strike. Those six prisoners are demanding their freedom because they are, you know, being imprisoned under uh, administrative detention without any trial, without any charges, just because they are Palestinians. They chose to go hungry and to, f to fast and to, to starve to f because it was the last means for them to fight for their own freedom. One of those uh, prisoners has reached his 100th day of fasting in the Israeli prison. جاي اليوم أنقل لكم صوت أهالي حي الشيخ جراح اللي جزء منهم اليوم موجود على الحيطة هون واللي بتمنى منكم إنكم تقرأوا قصصهم هدول جزء بسيط منهم لكن كل فرد في حي الشيخ جراح له قصة كل شخص فلسطيني له قصة لازم نسمعها وندعمها مهم تعرفوا إن القضية الفلسطينية مش مختزلة فيي أو بأخوي محمد أو بعائلتي القضية الفلسطينية هي قضية كل فلسطيني في فلسطين وخارج فلسطين هي قضية كل حجر فلسطيني كل, كل سنتيمتر في هذه الأرض فمن المهم أنه ندعم كل شيء فلسطيني وليس فقط نحن كأفراد It is important for Muna as well to represent the people of Sheikh Jarrah and to present the pictures here of the people from the neighborhood from Sheikh Jarrah. She also says that 
we have to learn about every one of them, about their struggles, about daily, their daily struggles. Because every Palestinian, every, every single, every individual has a struggle that they are going through. Palestine is not only about Muna, it's not about her brother Muhammad, it's not only about her family, it's not only about Sheikh Jarrah. It's a, the whole of Palestine is struggling. And the whole, the entirety of Palestinian people, they are all fighting for every inch in Palestine. So the Palestinian people and the Palestinian land is, is entirely and collectively we are fighting for freedom together. صح كان لي دور في الحراك اللي سمعتوا عنه في الآونة الأخيرة خاصة على السوشيال ميديا لكن هذه مسؤوليتي هذا واجبي تجاه بيتي وأرضي ووطني كان مهم كمان أحكي لكم إنه كل شاب وشابة فلسطينية كان لهم دور في هذا الحراك على الأرض وعلى السوشيال ميديا لذلك أنا اليوم بدي أطلب من كل الشباب الصغار في جنوب أفريقيا سواء كانوا صبايا أو شباب إنه يأخذوا مسؤوليتهم في إنهم يدافعوا عن القضية الفلسطينية لأن القضية الفلسطينية بتشبهكم إنتوا عشتوا اللي إحنا عمالنا بنعيشه اليوم إنتوا عشتوا فصل عنصري إحنا ما زلنا بنعيش هذا الفصل العنصري يوميا ومهم أحكي لكم إنه في فلسطين مش بس هناك فصل عنصري في تهجير قصري وهدم منازل واعتقال وضرب واعتداء يوميا فمن المهم من الشباب اليوم يأخذوا مسؤوليتهم ويتحركوا احنا بدنا تحرك توعية أكثر عن القضية الفلسطينية وتنظيم فعاليات شو ما كان شكلها لدعم القضية الفلسطينية وأيضا أدعو كل الجنوب أفريقيين كبارا كانوا أم صغارا إنهم يحاولوا يضغطوا على حكومة جنوب أفريقيا لوقف وقطع علاقاتها مع الاحتلال هذا الاحتلال اللي كل يوم بضربنا وبقتلنا When I says that she had a small role in the movement in Sheikh Jarrah in the past few months. But it was only her duty. It was her responsibility to do what she has done. She was fighting for her house, for her land, and for her, for her homeland. They have, there are many other youth in Palestine who have been fighting, whether it's on social media or in the ground. Many of them have been arrested in the, in the past few months. So we have to remember all of those. For that reason, I also send a message to the young people of South Africa to continue supporting and to stand up for Palestine and to do more action and to be more active and proactive on the ground. You and as South Africans have lived what we are living today. What you passed is our present. It's very important for, again, for the, especially the young people to act on the ground, to organize events, and to protest and to organize different ways and methods of protesting against the Israeli brutality. You, ha you can, as the people of Sheikh Jarrah have tried to be, uh, uh, to create and to be more creative in their struggles, she also uh, urged you to also be creative in the ways and the methodology that you use in fighting against the Israeli regime. I also urge she also urged the entire people of South Africa to, to keep pushing and pressuring on your South African government to support the Palestinian people. مش فقط لا نريد فقط من حكومة جنوب أفريقيا دعمنا كفلسطينيين لكن كما كنت أقول دائما نحن بحاجة لتحرك لفعل ملموس وبالتالي أنا بدعوكم وبطلب منكم تضغطوا على حكومة جنوب أفريقيا وبالتالي كل حكومات العالم لوقف وقطع علاقاتها مع هذا الكيان الصهيوني الغاصب الفاشي المتطرف اللي بقتلنا يوميا اللي بيعتقلنا يوميا اللي بيهجرنا يوميا إحنا مجبرين على التعامل 
مع محاكم احتلالية استعمارية استيطانية فاشية برأسها قضاة مستوطنين يهود لابسين الكباء على راسهم ووضعين قوانين لخدمة الاستيطان والمستوطنين وليس لخدمة أنا كفلسطينية لكن إحنا مجبرين على التعاطي والمثول أمام هذه المحاكم لكننا لا نؤمن بهذه المحاكم وبالتالي نحن نؤمن بالحراك الشعبي على الأرض في فلسطين وفي خارج فلسطين نحن نؤمن بشعبنا الفلسطيني ونؤمن بأحرار العالم كشعب جنوب أفريقيا للاستمرار في دعمنا حتى تحرير فلسطين كل فلسطين من البحر للنهر So we ask you to also mobilize the South African government not to only support the Palestinian people but also to, to act for the, for the Palestinian people. We want, we ask you to help and to push your government to also cut its ties and its relations with the, with the Israeli regime. We in Sharrah are fighting against the Israeli legal system and because we have to stand in the Israeli court. It's not something we choose to do. We understand that all the Israeli judges, they are all settlers, Jewish settlers who came from overseas and they put laws and regulations to fight against us and to back and to support the settlers because they, are, they themselves are settlers supporting a settler regime. We have it's, it is very unfortunate that we have to deal with these, with these courts. Even though we do, we do not believe in them, we do not think that they are legitimate at all. They are, it's an illegitimate legal system. However, we have to fight in it. We believe in the popular struggle, and we believe in the connection and the support of people like yourselves on the ground to support the, the freedom of Palestine from the river to the sea. طولت عليكم بعرف بس بدي أختم لما القاضي حكى لي هذه صورة مين اللي موجه عليها رصاصة خلوا هاي الصورة قدامكم واعرفوا إنه كل يوم في شخص فلسطيني موجه نحوه رصاصة ممكن أنتوا تكونوا شارينها بعدم مقاطعتكم لمنتجات الاحتلال شكرا لكم Earlier when we came in, Judge Desai explained a little bit about the image of Ashley Creel there. And she says that they all look at the picture and remember that on a daily basis there is a child or there is a Palestinian who is being killed just like Ashley Creel was killed here in South Africa. <clears throat> For that reason, we want to remind you that the boycott campaign is very important. Because in every cent that you spend and, and in every rand that you spend on Israeli products, you actually support and you help the Israeli regime to buy a bullet to kill innocent people just like Ashley Kree was killed here in South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Minna, for those very inspiring words we are inspired by what you are thank you very much you know uh, when i spoke about administrative detention uh, jimmy you should be familiar with that as a victim of administrative detention uh, administrative detention means being locked up without a trial we resented that in the apartheid era we fought against that it's happening now continues to happen in Israel, in Palestine and in Israel. The debate about whether they should be defended in courts, in Israeli courts or not, is a debate we also participated in, in our time. But as they choose to do, 
to defend themselves despite the uncertainty and perhaps illegality of appearing in an Israeli court. Their struggle that dem demonstrates that it is very much a similar struggle that we fought here in this country. But there's one concluding remark I wish to make. Their slogan is, we resist to exist. And that's a chilling thought. It's chilling because if you don't resist, you fail to exist. And they have assumed that slogan as their own because the reality of the struggle in Israel today. It shows how deathly that struggle has become. And the Ashri Kriels of yesteryear or the Ashri Kriels of today in, in, in Palestine and in Israel. We can only assume that the struggle will intensify before it reaches greater heights. And all we can do as a free nation is to recommit ourselves, rededicate ourselves, to support in any, man any manner we can the struggle of the Palestinian people. <laughs> you know, we've supported it over the years in different ways. But the intensification of the plight means that we should intensify our struggle on the ground, in the, in the arenas in which we participate in this country to find a solution. Chief Mandela, uh, Mandela Mandela has pointed out several respects in which we can intensify the struggle. Boycott, divestment campaign is a vital cog in that wheel. And we must intensify it at every level we can. Muna, it's a privilege to have you here. We, you see that you are amidst friends. We are many friends here. But we are not simply friends in the ordinary sense of the word. We are comrades in your struggle. And if you fight a bitter struggle in Palestine, remember us here who are with you sharing your pain. And more than sharing your pain, also committing our lives to your struggle. We do the best we can. Uh, Martin, will you pass a vote of thanks? Martin Janssen of the PSC will pass a vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, a vote of thanks to the following. Firstly, Mizan for organizing and initiating this visit. Uh, Abdullah Griffith, thank you very much. And then our panel up here, the Chairperson, Siraj Desai, our speakers, Nkorsi Mandla Mandela, Father Michael Weeder, and Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriels, thank you very much for gracing us with your presence and your wise words of inspiration. The Cape Cultural Collective for their uh, cultural items, uh, and sorry to Jordan, hopefully we'll have scope to, to give you uh, some airtime. Uh, the organizing committee, and there are too many individuals to mention. There's a long WhatsApp group, so I'll mention the organizations. It's the MJC, uh, PSC Cape Town, uh, Friends of Mizan, uh, PF, PSF UCT, and uh, Al Quds Youth. I think I've, I've covered all of them. Um, and then very importantly to Community House for granting us the venue for free as a political gesture. Um, I'm just wondering if it's possible at all for uh, Muna during the, the supper, maybe just to go around and uh, pay respects and connect to the other martyrs who we memorialize at Community House. We have been introduced to Ashley Kiel, or she has, um, but there are quite a few others uh, that would be worth um, going to, to see. And perhaps the manager, uh, Joa, could, could do that for us. Um, so Community House, we want to thank for the venue. And then 
all the service providers, the sound, the caterers, um, and also the media, and of course the sponsors who don't want to be named. Thank you very much. And our guest of honor, thanks to you for gracing us with your presence. Thanks. Thank you. Supper will now be served.